This gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world. Mm. So it's not going to stop. It's going to keep going. Mm. Amen? Mm. Amen. Doesn't matter. They can censor people, whatever. The word of God, before there was internet, it still went out. It yeah. didn't matter. Amen. Amen. It doesn't matter. You could shut the t internet off. It won't matter because the gospel is still going to go out. It was going out before internet even Amen. happened. Before the newspaper happened, the gospel was being preached. Amen. Whether people see it or not, it's going to keep spreading. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. But let's pray and then uh, we'll get in the word. Father, we just thank you for your word this day. We give you glory, honor, and praise, Father God. We thank you for the newness of life. We thank you for feeding us, nourishing us, replenishing our soul, Father God. That you said, they that hunger and thirst after righteousness shall be filled, Father God. Teach us your word, Lord. Hallelujah. Mold us, shape us, Father God, even as we're just conformed into the image of your dear Son. Hallelujah. As we just renew our minds, Father God, that we're no longer conformed to the world, but we're transformed by the renewing of our minds, Father God. We thank you. We glorify you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Because every good gift and perfect gift from you, Father God. And we honor you and praise you for your word, Father God, that we won't have to thirst anymore, Father. And we thank you, Father. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you for those who need to be healed, to be ministered to, you, to. Father. We thank you for your Holy Spirit. Father God, whatever gifts or manifestations of your presence happens, Father God, we always give you the glory. Hallelujah. All the honor and all the praise for it. In Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Yeah. I was just thinking, uh, praise God. We'll, we'll go to Hebrews chapter 1. Amen. Because like it says in Romans, he said it, it transforms us. That's like the transformers. Amen. <laughs> it's not the Decepticons. We're not on that side no more. Amen. <laughs> We're on the other side. <laughs> Where uh, it's the good, amen. amen. But it says here in Hebrews chapter 1, in 1 and 2 and 3, it says, God, who at sun-dry times, and in other words, he's saying sun-dry times is in many parts and ways and in divers manners, so spoke, in time past unto the fathers by the prophets. So he spoke in the old covenant by the prophets. Mm -hmm. That's that's how he was leading. Mm -hmm. He had his spirit come upon him and that's where we got all the way from Genesis to Malachi. Mm -hmm. But it says, it says, has in these last days spoken unto us by his son. Mm -hmm. So he came and showed up in person Amen. 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 He was like, a man was coming to speak all the words about me <laughs> and what was to come to set the stage for him when he was going to come into this earth. Mm -hmm. So he can come and speak personally to us in the flesh, but now he's speaking to us by his spirit. Amen. 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 So he says right here, he has spoken unto us by his son who he had appointed... And in other words, he has appointed or ordained heir of all things by whom also he had made the worlds, who being in the brightness of his glory and the express, we talked about the blueprint of his image, of his person, and upholding all things by the word of his power. Now, you know that isn't just a man. Because no man's upholding all things by the word of his power. Right. <laughs> he can uphold some things, mm -hmm. maybe a job, mm -hmm. uphold his family by his words, you know, or uphold, but he's not upholding the worlds. Mm -hmm. Amen. Only God can do that. Mm -hmm. And he says right here, by, may, by whom, what, he made also the worlds. He said, upholding all things by the word of his power when he had by himself purged our sins and sat down 
at the right hand of the majesty on high. So he said in verse 2, he said, He has in these last days spoken unto us by his Son. It says right here in 1 Peter, We go there. First Peter one. It says in verse eighteen, for as much as you know that you were not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold from that's man made things, silver and gold, from your vain or empty conversations mm -hmm. <clears throat> received by the traditions from your fathers, but how were we redeemed? Verse 19, but with the precious blood of Christ. Amen? Amen. That's an eternal redemption. Amen. Praise God. Amen. As of a lamb without blemish and without spot. So a perfect lamb, he was saying. Mm -hmm. Who verily was foreordained. And in other words, he was to be known beforehand before the foundation of the world. So it was already preordained mm -hmm. before the foundation of the world. What? But was manifest when? In these last times for you. Who was Jesus? Mm -hmm. He came on the earth in the last time. When Jesus came, rose again. These are the, these are the times of the last. That was the first advent that they talk about. It was his coming, his first event. Then there's a second mm -hmm. event coming when Jesus returns, amen? Mm -hmm. So we're in the last days, because every day, like it says here in Romans 13, it says right here, verse 11, and that knowing the time, so he's saying recognizing the time, the time we're living in, the seasons we are in, amen? That now it is high time. So the time's ticking, just like it's going on to 11, but going on, we're closer to the midnight hour than we were when Jesus came to the earth in the first event when he was born into the earth and he died and rose again we're talking almost two thousand years mm -hmm. he said it is high time to what awake out of what sleep amen mm -hmm. for now that meaning present not past but present mm -hmm. is our salvation our deliverance amen yeah. nearer or closer <laughs> than when we believed. Mm -hmm. So it's getting closer than when we first came to know Christ. Amen? Mm -hmm. It's even closer than when Jesus came to the earth. Praise God the mm -hmm. first time. So this is the grace time. Amen? Because mm -hmm. when he comes back the second time, it's not going to be the grace period. It's coming for deliverance to bring redeem his people. Amen? Mm -hmm. So it says right here, verse 12, the night is far spent and the day is at hand mm -hmm. let us therefore cast off the works of darkness and let us what put on the armor of light amen mm -hmm. so at least we don't be caught sleeping praise god mm -hmm. go here to first thessalonians first thessalonians chapter 5 It says, verse 1, but, as, but of the times, it says, but of the times, <coughs> really referring to uh, the times and the seasons, brother, you have no need that I write unto you. For, your, for yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh. How is he going to come? As is a thief in the night. Now he'll come as a thief in the night to those who aren't knowing the times and the seasons. Amen. Mm -hmm. But he said, for when they shall say peace and safety, everything's okay, don't worry about it. Then sudden destruction cometh upon them 
as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. Mm -hmm. That's talking about these these times. This is gonna even they they talk about the rapture where it's saying we won't be here mm -hmm. when these things come. That's what it's saying, you know, about the rapture. But he says, But you, brethren, are not in darkness, that that day should overtake you as a thief. Amen? One that's caught off guard. Amen? Amen. A thief comes, <coughs> like when we go at work, they're trying to sneak up in there. A couple of days, they've been getting caught. But I'm saying, <laughs> they come in there acting like they're everyone else, and just to like, be a chameleon to camouflage in there. Or you could see a, if you're at your house or something. But now we got cameras people do in their home. But, you know, they come in because they plot and scheme. People aren't thinking about all day, oh, yeah. Worry. You know, you shouldn't have to live a life worried that a thief's going to come in. Like that, that's just not, that's not living a life. If you always got to look around all the time, like mm -hmm. someone may break in, there's no peace in that. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. But it's not saying you're dumb or ignorant or not looking, you know, but you're not dwelling on it all day long, you know, like waiting for a thief to come through the door or something. <laughs> nuh -uh. He just says, but we should not be in darkness that the day should overtake us as, a, as of a thief. He said, you are all the children of light. Amen. That gives us hope. Mm -hmm. He said, and not the chill and the children of the day. We are not of the night nor of the darkness. He said, therefore, let us not sleep. Be slumber, you know, mm -hmm. where we're relaxed, where we're not, where we're eased up and just relaxed into the world. But he says, but let us watch and be sober, meaning vigilant, clear thinking. For they that sleep, sleep in the night, and they that be drunken are drunken in the night. But let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the what? The breastplate of faith or confidence or assurance and love. And for a helmet, what? The hope of salvation for God has not it says appointed us he didn't ordain us to wrath meaning the time when he comes back where the wrath is going to come upon the earth but what he up to obtain deliverance salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ who died for us that whether we're alive or asleep we should live together with them Therefore, what does he say? Comfort yourselves together and edify one another, even also as you do. Mm -hmm. So he's saying well, we shouldn't be frightened or afraid mm -hmm. about the times and seasons, even these times mm -hmm. we're in. Amen? Mm -hmm. Because we're not the children of darkness. We're the children of light. Amen? Mm -hmm. We have an eternal hope, an eternal salvation. Praise God. Mm -hmm. it, there is coming a time upon the earth. Mm. where things are going to transpire. Mm. Amen. And we're reading that. Let's go here to Matthew 24, verse 11. Yeah. It says, and where we left off, it says, And many false prophets shall rise, <laughs> and many, and shall deceive many. And because of iniquity, talking about lawlessness, that's what it really is. Iniquity is lawlessness, mm. where people just do whatever they want, and have no disregard for the law of uh, actually the law of God, mm -hmm. but the laws to implement are, are supposed to be for God because they're for, supposed to be for good. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. Not for the people who are doing good. It's supposed to be for the people doing wrong. Amen. Mm -hmm. That's what the commandments are for. Not for those when you're living righteous, you're not doing. Mm -hmm. There's no law against love. Amen. If you're walking in love, you care about someone, there's no law for, mm. against it. Mm. But there's coming a time where lawlessness comes in, and it's happened repeatedly throughout history, Rome and all these times. If you look at history, they, they even today, we have dictators. They want to implement their own laws and do their own thing. And actually, it's contrary to the things of God because they want to control people, <laughs> amen, mm. and not give a democracy to the people like like so like that lady said 
when the when people fear the government, it's tyranny. But when the government fears the people, it's liberty, mm -hmm. right? Because it's not saying the government's in control of everybody. Mm -hmm. You know, if they, because uh, it's it's always about we the people. Amen. They're mm -hmm. not in position because <laughs> because of the people. Mm -hmm. But when people want to take control then there's a problem. I'm saying just controlling. Mm. And, they, and things are being set up because there's going to come a time a, a person's going to arise. We've seen it. You could, you could see it throughout history. I mean, we're going to see through this word here. It says, Because of iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. But he that in, shall endure unto the end, the same shall be what? Saved. Mm. Amen? Mm. Endurance is patience. Mm. And the go this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world. Yeah. So it's not going to stop. It's going to keep going. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen. Doesn't matter. They can censor people, whatever. The word of God, before there was internet, it still went out. It Amen. didn't matter. Amen. Amen. <laughs> it doesn't matter. You could shut the t internet off. It won't matter because the gospel is still going to go out. It was going out before internet even Amen. happened, before the newspaper happened. The gospel was being preached. Amen. Whether people see it or not, it's going to keep spreading. Amen. 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 And it says it was preach unto all the world for a witness or a testimony unto all nations. Because it says in Revelation, the spirit, the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. Because you're telling the people Jesus is coming back. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen. That's foretelling he's going to come back. Amen? Mm -hmm. So it says, and then what? Shall the end come? Mm -hmm. When you therefore shall see... The abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel, the prophet, stand in the holy place. Whoso readeth, let him understand. So he was talking about in the book of Daniel, there was a time, because there's something that even happened right after Daniel, where there was a king, if we go, it was in the time of Maccabees. Mm -hmm. And we've talked about this before, but if we go to Daniel right here, Everyone, it's in the Old Testament after Ezekiel. It's a pretty big book. But Ezekiel, <laughs> it says here in Daniel chapter 9, it says, it's talking about here that, I'll just read some of it in verse 23. It says, at the beginning of the supp thy supplications, the commandment came forth and I am come. He's talking about the angel, Gabriel, showed him. Or showed him. He said, uh, right here. He says, uh, I am come to show thee, for thou art greatly beloved, telling to Daniel. Therefore, understand the matter and consider the vision. Seventy weeks are determined upon thy people and upon the holy city to finish the transgression. Mm -hmm. That's what Jesus come to do, to finish the transgression. He says, and to make an end of sins, because it said, and we always say that scripture in 2 Corinthians 5, he that knew no sin took sin upon him that we might be made the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Amen. amen. He came to end sins, amen, to cover them, amen, by his blood. It says right here, and to make reconciliation for iniquity. It says it also in that chapter, 2 Corinthians 5, to wit, God was in Christ, reconciling the world <laughs> unto himself, not imputing their sins unto them. He wasn't accounting the sins unto them. That's why David said, sound blessed is the man whose sins are forgiven mm -hmm. and it, what whose iniquities are covered. Amen? Mm -hmm. So that's what Jesus came to do because bulls and goats <laughs> couldn't do it all. That was just, that was like a, covering for a period mm -hmm. just like you cover paint on a wall <laughs> amen it was temporary covering but jesus came to give it eternal covering amen mm -hmm. eternal cleansing praise god mm -hmm. and what <clears throat> and to bring in everlasting righteousness amen yeah. that's why we're made righteous not by our own works but by the works of what jesus did for us yeah. amen, amen. He made us righteous in God. It doesn't matter how good we are. It isn't by how good we are. Because it says, for all have sinned 
and sh shall and fallen short of the glory of God. It says, for what? For there is none good, no, not one. Amen. Because all have sinned. It does. I don't care how good the person is. If he ain't saved, he ain't good. Mm -hmm. Amen. Because he needs to be reborn or born again. Amen. Right. And it's only made righteous, <laughs> meaning in God's sight, Amen. not in man's. We can look righteous in man's sight, how mm -hmm. good man will look. But only in God's sight, it isn't by our works. It's what Jesus' works were done on the cross that makes us righteous. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen? It's not how good, how perfect, whatever. It doesn't matter. It's by Jesus' works is why we're made righteous. So you can't, don't condemn yourself if you mess up or something. You ask for forgiveness and God cleanses you from what? All unrighteousness. That's why the scriptures in 1 John 1, 9, God is faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse us from what? All unrighteousness if we sin. Amen? So we're made righteous again. Praise God. It's not by our works. We got to get that out of our head that we think. It's not that we don't do any works, but it's not based on our works that we're now made righteous. It's because of what he did and not what we did. At least any man should boast. Amen? I didn't die for everyone. Jesus did. Amen? I wasn't perfect. Jesus was perfect. Amen? Amen. The only com perfectness that comes is through him. Mm -hmm. Amen? <laughs> so he says right here, and verse, to seal up the vision and prophecy and to the anoint the most holy. So he was to seal it up. That's why when you go in Revelation chapter 5, he said, who is he to what? To undo the seals. That's right. Who, who, who is the person? Because we can't find none worthy. No, not one he's talking about. But then they did. They said, behold, this is the lamb without spot and blemish who's able to open the seals. Amen. Amen. And it was Jesus. Amen. And so he says right here, know therefore and understand that from the going forth of the commandment to restore and build Jerusalem unto who? The Messiah. The prince. Amen. That's talking about Jesus. If you want to talk to Jewish people, show them this scripture. It's talking about the Messiah, the prince. Amen. What? Shall be seven weeks and three score and two weeks. And the street shall be built again and the wall even in troublous times. And after three score, talking about 62 weeks, shall the Messiah, what? Be cut off. He shall die. That's what happened to him. But what did he do? He didn't do it for himself. Amen? He didn't die for himself. He died for the world. For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son. And what? And the people of the prince that shall come shall destroy the city and the sanctuary. And the end thereof shall be with a flood. And unto the end of the war desolations are determined. So there was a time also when things came, because it happened in the Maccabees, mm -hmm. that this is before the Messiah, before Jesus came, mm -hmm. that Antiochus he came forth, and then he went, and it was Judas, you know, went up against him. But he came, and he actually went in, because he, he was against the Jews, he took them captive. He went into the temple, took out the treasury, and he threw swine, swine fluid all over the tat inside the most holy. And then he put blood in there and stuff. He, he desolated the most holy t place. Mm -hmm. Now that was under when the old time was in the, on the old covenant. I'm saying he did that. But there's coming another time. That a guy, and this man was like the Antichrist, mm -hmm. even his name, like he was, he wanted everyone to worship him that uh, came. He was against anything that was against, uh, he was anti-God. That's mm -hmm. what his name was like, called the Mighty God, I believe, or something like that. This is how these people thought, I'm saying back then, but that was a spirit. He wasn't the Antichrist that's to come, but he was in a, a type and shadow, mm -hmm. if you okay. look. Yeah. And so it says, and he shall confirm the covenant, verse 27, with many for one week. And in the midst of the week, he shall cause the sacrifice and the oblation to cease. And for the overspreading of the 
abominations he shall make it desolate or destroy even until the consumption and that determined shall be poured upon the desolate. It's kind of when you read it, it's like, man, what is this? This is talking about when the Antichrist comes. Mm -hmm. So there's a stage being set, and they're talking about, you know, they'll build a temple because they're saying there's going to be a temple built, mm -hmm. a new one. And then he's going to come in there and desolate the temple. Now we'll see. Go here to Daniel chapter 8. I want you to see something. It says here, because I'm not, I'm going to kind of go through it a little fast. I want to go through all this. But I just, because we're talking about the last days, amen, the latter times. It says here in verse 23 of 8, because these were different times that things were coming forth. And it talks about, I believe, uh, um, through different, if we went through here, just different times of different uh, kings that were reigning. And uh, it says here, verse 23, it says, And in the latter time of their kingdom, when the transgressors are come to the full. See, that's when things are at the full. We talk about the wheat and tares, as he talks about in Matthew 13, how Jesus said he's going to let them grow. At least he pluck it out before time, but it's when transgression's full. Mm -hmm. Amen. That means it's to the peak, just like we'll see in the days of Noah. That's <laughs> when sin was at its fullest. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, the only safe place was going to be in the ark. Amen. Mm -hmm. and, and thank God we're in the ark in Jesus. Amen. Mm -hmm. he, he's the ark, he's the covering. Mm -hmm. And it says, when the transgressors are come to full, a king of fierce continents, talking about like angry continents, mm -hmm. what? And understanding dark sentences shall stand up. Mm -hmm. And his power shall be mighty, but not by his own power. Well, who's it going to be by? The devil. That's right. It's not going to be by his own power. Mm -hmm. And he shall what? Destroy wonderfully. That's when it talks about when they say there shall be peace and safety, but then cometh sudden destruction. Mm -hmm. And what? He shall prosper too. In other words, he'll go forth and practice and shall destroy who? The mighty and the holy people. Mm. So there'll, there'll be a time where he'll just come. People will be martyred and all that. Mm -hmm. And through his policies, the policies, just like today, they make policies. This is <coughs> policies he's going to make. He shall also what? Cause craft to prosper in his hand. And what will he do? He shall magnify himself in his heart. That's where he'll be lifted up. That's the same thing the devil did. In the beginning, he lifted up his heart in heaven mm -hmm. and said, yeah, we could read it in Isaiah 14. Mm -hmm. If you look real quick, we'll go back. But just to show you, I'm not going to go through everything. But I want you to see uh, what he says in Isaiah 14. It says, verse 12, How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer? Son of the morning. In other words, son of the day. He says, not morning, meaning weeping, but morning as of the day. He said, how art thou cut down to the ground which didst weaken the nations? For you have said in your heart. See, that's the same thing this guy is saying, this Antichrist is saying, because it's always saying in his heart, what? I will ascend into heaven. This is when he was there. He said, I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. Mm -hmm. Talking about the angels. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation. Talking about in heaven. In the sides of the north. I, see, whenever you, it's always, this is how the devil is always about him. It's I, 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 I. That's where you read. If you keep looking, it's I will, I will, I will, 
I will. He keeps saying, I will. It's all about him. That's his focus. He said, I will what? Ascend above the heights of the clouds and I will be like the most high. That, that's what he wants to be. That's what the devil, that's why he's so against God because he wants to be that. That's what Antichrist is. It's against anything that God does or who God is. Amen? Because he, he wants him to be the focus. Yet, this is what the Lord says, thou shalt be brought down to hell to the sides of the pit. That's what the Lord did. I mean, he's already a defeated foe, but I'm just telling you, he's going to use the man to go ahead and do that. So he says here, let's go back here to uh, Daniel chapter 8 real quick. And then we'll finish. But it says, he, in verse 25, he shall magnify himself in the heart and by peace. See that? Mm. Didn't say by war. It says by peace shall he destroy many. Mm. See? They come in peace, but really <laughs> it's de destruction. Mm. That's why it says when they say peace and safety, here comes destruction. That's why, you know, Hitler... When he came and rose to power, everything looked good on the outside. And that's why I was sharing before, it all looked good. Like one lady, survivors from the Holocaust, it looked good because when they were in Aust Austria, they, were, they saw how everyone was, looked prosperous, everyone had a car, the economy looked good, and they were in bad inflation. So they took a vote and said, man, and he was talking good. He didn't seem like he was a bad person or anything mm -hmm. at that time. He was real charismatic in <coughs> speaking because if you look at him, you don't see too many speaking the way he did back then. Mm -hmm. You know, he was like, when you hear him, I, I couldn't understand what he said, but I'm saying he's speaking Russian, but what's well, a German? But you see how he was real, like, enthusiastic in speaking. Yeah, but he crept laws in. He changed policies, you know, little by little. They don't just do it all at one time. They do it little by little, you know, and they just like, you know, just like a child tests the parents to see how much they could get away with. They do it little by little. And the first thing they did when they, they voted him in, he censored them from hearing any other type of news. Mm -hmm. So they said, if you hear anything else, BBC news or whatever, mm -hmm. British news or anything, he said it's death penalty. Mm -hmm. That was through the radio, because all they had back then was like radio and stuff, but it was death penalty. If, mm -hmm. they, listened to, if they got caught listening to anything else mm -hmm. but what their news brought. Mm -hmm. What is that? That's because they want you to be brainwash in believing <laughs> mm -hmm. this is the only thing you can get your uh, news from. Mm -hmm. But thank God we got our news from the true news. Amen. Mm -hmm. When you know the truth, the truth makes us free. Mm -hmm. But what it was was censoring. Mm -hmm. But because it, today you don't have to do it that much as far as they can censor it. But if you get up more of the news stations all gathering together and all trying to say the same thing, it really it censors people out anyways. Mm -hmm. You know, if everyone gets on the same accord and they just say all the same things, then what, what, how do you know what's truth or what isn't, you know? And so, you know, you, you got to separate what's truth, but that's why we have the Word of God. Amen? Amen. And uh, he says right here, it said, by peace he shall destroy many. He shall also, what, stand up against the Prince of Peace. That shows you where he's at. He, he, well, he tried standing up against him when he came out at the first event, but he didn't know. He, he's not, he, doesn't, he is even all-knowing, so he didn't even know when he came against Jesus, he thought killing him was going to do great things for him, that he can take over the earth, but killing him was great things for us because he killed him thinking he would d die but nah, -uh, cause he was perfect, and God justified him. He rose again, Amen. Mm -hmm. So he thought that at that time, and the same time when Jesus returns again, he thinks he's gonna stand up against him to do him wrong. But this time, Lord's not gonna waste no time with them. 
he'll be like with the sword of his mouth he'll be destroyed he says right here but he shall be broken and what without hand the Lord don't even have to use his hands he just speaks the word and it's done because the same word he upholds all things by the word of his power is the same word he's going to just speak and they'll be perished amen. amen if you if you don't believe me look at here go to the book of John real quick probably all know where I'm going but look here look at John right here 18 this is when they were coming to get Jesus and Judas, you know, betrayed him. He always uses someone. He entered G Judas's heart because he was a thief and he didn't care about the people. He cared about the money. That's what it said. He was about the money. Yeah. And so what did he say? It said when G verse 1 in John 18, when Jesus had spoken these words, he went forth with his disciples over the brook Sidron where it was a garden into which he entered and his disciples just like Adam where was he in a garden amen mm -hmm. and it said Judas also which <laughs> betrayed him knew the place and Jesus oftentimes resorted thither with his disciples why he'd go there and pray mm -hmm. he went to his garden amen mm -hmm. Judas then having received a band talking about a band of military that's about 600 people it's talking about he brought with them. It wasn't like five people or in the movie or a few of them. 600 people came. A band of men and officers from the chief priests and Pharisees cometh thither with lanterns and torches and weapons. Jesus, therefore, knowing all things that should come upon him, went forth and said unto him, Who seek you? This is what Jesus said to him. Who, who are you seeking? They answered, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus saith unto them, I am. They put he as in italics, but he said I am. It should be capital because that's what God told Moses. He said, I am that I am. And watch what happened. When he said, I am, and Judas also, which betrayed him, stood with them. Verse 6, as soon as... Then, as he had said I, unto them, I am, what happened? They went backward and fell to the ground. Mm -hmm. See, the power of his word, as soon as he said, I am, they all fell to the ground. Mm -hmm. He was just showing that, this, uh, you know, you can't take me unless I have you take me. That's mm -hmm. right. When he said, I am, it's all only written here in the book of John, but when he said, I am, they all just fell out to the ground. Talking about being slain in the spirit and with his word, they were slain right to the ground. They couldn't even, all of them fell, every one of them. That shows you the power of his word. Amen. And then he asked them again, Who do you seek? <laughs> they, they had to get regain consciousness again. So he asked them again, Whom you seeking? Because when they fell back, the power of God hit them people and they fell big time that's the same words he upholds all things by the word of his power that's why he said all power and authority is given unto me in heaven and earth so when he spoke it and said i am they just fell that's down right. amen. amen they couldn't amen. touch him that's why he said no man takes my life he said i i lay it down no man's coming to take it they can't just take it unless he allowed them amen, amen. and when he comes back the second time he ain't allowing no one to take nothing he's coming to take what belongs to him amen, amen. the kingdoms of this world will become the kingdoms of god amen. praise god amen. so here let's go back over here to daniel real quick i know i'm going back and forth but i want you to see in chapter eight he said Oh, I'm sorry. So he said he, he would be broken without hand. Amen? Mm -hmm. So th this is him. He'll be destroyed or broken. The, de the Antichrist and all the people with him will be broken without hand. Amen? Mm -hmm. He's going to use his word. Praise God. So back here to uh, Matthew 24. We'll go here. I want you to see something. And we're, we're in verse 16. So verse 15 saying, when you see this abomination of desolation, 
Verse 16 saying, Then what? Let them which be in Judea flee into the mountains. Let him that is on the housetop not come down to take anything out of his house. Neither let him which is in the field return back to take his clothes. And woe unto them that are with child and them that give suck in those days. But pray you that your flight be not in winter nor on the Sabbath day. For then shall be great tribulation. Mm -hmm. It says, such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time, no, no, nor ever shall be. So he's saying there's a tribulation that will come in the last days that will be nothing compared to it mm -hmm. ever. I mean, even before. And there's been, we haven't <laughs> seen things like before because Rome was a lot of tribulation going on. Mm -hmm. You know, people were being beheaded. They were persecuting Christians, burning them at the stake. That's pretty uh, rough. I mean, going on, we're not even seeing that. Mm -hmm. And so they're saying there's coming a time. I don't believe we won't be here, but at least they're saying we're raptured mm -hmm. before all that comes. Mm -hmm. I'm saying, but there's coming a time where people, it, it's never going to be like the time before throughout all history and when we read the bible you see and you can even go through history even the times not so long ago the medieval times when they didn't even really have the word they talk about the dark ages i mean they had that's why they call people barbarians and all of them i mean it was it was pretty bad and so he says right here verse 22 and except those days should be shortened and in other words he, he's going to cut it short, there should no flesh be saved. But for the elect's sake, those days should be shortened. And he said that, he said even elect. So when we go throughout the Bible in the Old Testament, we'll see the days of Noah. <laughs> you look at Simon and Gomorrah. But when you look at the days of Noah, man, it was scarcely anyone saved. Eight people. That, that's not good. I'm saying for that time, every, the whole earth was destroyed, but only eight people were saved and the animals. Mm -hmm. Praise God. But mm -hmm. only eight people, that, that's like barely uh, anyone saved. But thank God for Jesus, for him that can justify many. Mm -hmm. And he says, verse 23, Then if any man shall say unto you, Lo, here is Christ, or there it is, there, believe it not. For there shall arise false Christ and false prophets and shall show great signs and wonders. Insomuch that if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. That's why when you go in Revelation 12 and 13, it talks about how even the Antichrist, he'll show great signs and wonders and people are going to believe it. That's a, they're going to be deceived by it of what he's going to show. And some will say they, they'll even take the mark of the beast. You know, and in other words, well, the mark as far as to take what he has. Because these are people also that may have known and fell away, the apostasy. Mm -hmm. Where it talks about where we read before, the last time where people will fall away from the gospel. And it says right here, <coughs> in so much that... If, if it were possible, they should even deceive the what? Very elect, the very chosen. Wherefore, if they shall say unto you, Behold, he is in the desert, go not forth. Behold, he is in secret chambers, believe it not. For as the lightning cometh out of the east and shineth even unto the west, so shall the coming of the Son of Man be. What, and in other words, the Lord isn't going to come in secret. He's not going to be in this place or that place. He's going to crack the sky wide open. That's how he's coming back. He, he's not coming back tiptoeing in this time. Mm -hmm. -uh. He's not coming back through a woman. Amen. Mm -hmm. He's coming back on a horse mm -hmm. with ten thousands of the saints with him. And he's coming what? With the sky open. And with his whole army, amen, the host of heaven coming back, amen. So it's going to be a scene where everyone can see, amen. Look at this. I want you to see something. 
For wheresoever the carcass is, there will the eagles be gathered together, talking about the Armageddon. Immediately after that tribulation of those days, the sun shall be darkened, the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of heaven shall be sa shaken. And then shall the appear uh, the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn. When they and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory, and he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds and from one end of heaven to the other. So we'll see right here. Go over here because there is a time coming where the Lord He is going to return. Amen. I, I don't know if it's in our time, but he's coming back. But it says here, these people, go to the uh, book of Second Peter. Look at this. Let's go to Second Peter chapter 3. Because it's always to remind people <coughs> that he is going to return. Amen. It's not, it's not saying people seem to kind of forget that the Lord, they become relaxed in things of the world. Amen. People, you'll see, people will be getting money like we're seeing before, like they never got money before. All of it. Everything's going to be handed out because the devil knows his time's short. Mm -hmm. He wants the world to just give everything. I'm saying to just make everything like, hey, you can enjoy all that you have. But look at this. Watch this in verse chapter 3. It said, This second epistle, he said, Beloved, I now write unto you, and both which I stir up your pure minds by the way of remembrance, that you be mindful <laughs> of the words which were spoken before by the holy prophets and of the commandments of us, the apostles of our Lord and Savior, knowing this first, that there shall come when? In the last days. What? scoffers <laughs> scoffers people mocking people speaking against watch walking after their own lust and saying where is the promise of his coming mm -hmm. they'll be like man you've been talking about it where is it we don't see nothing because they want to live <laughs> life as usual <laughs> they'll be like yeah we don't believe uh, you always keep talking about he's coming he's coming where's it been it's been over what they might be saying over 2,000 years now we you know when is this coming but he said for since the fathers fell asleep all things continue as they were from the beginning of creation for this they willingly <laughs> are ignorant of that by the word of God, the heavens were of old. He said, by the word of God, he never he upholds all things by the word of power. And so it says, by the word of God, the heavens were of old, the earth standing out of the water and in the water, whereby the world that then was <coughs> being overflowed with water, what? Perished. So it perished back then. Let's go here back to Matthews real quick. I want you to see something in 24. To now learn the parable of the fig tree when the branch is yet tender and put it for leave. Know that summer is near. So likewise, when you shall see all these things, know that it is near even at the doors when tribulation comes. But he said, Verily I say unto you, this generation shall not pass till all these things be fulfilled. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. Amen? Amen. So you can bank on his words that it's going to happen. <coughs> Praise God. Amen. He said, but watch this. Verse 36. But of that day and hour knoweth no man. No, not the angels of heaven, but my Father only. So what? His return. Mm -hmm. But as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. <coughs> For as in the days that were before <coughs> the flood, they were what? Eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark. And in other words, it's saying they were just living life casual and as usual. They, they were just going eating and drinking. They were partying. Mm -hmm. they were, and when they talk about eating, 
It wasn't just regular eating. It says here in Luke, look at this. Go to Luke 21, verse 34. It says, And take heed to yourselves, lest at any time your hearts be overcharged or weighed down <coughs> with surfeitine. Surfeitine <coughs> is gluttoning or overeating, where people are just like going crazy. They're eating. You know, like today, we, they just eat. Some eat out of anxiety, you know, or worrying or overburdened. But this word here, surfeitine, it means it's a medical term used for nausea after drunkenness or which simply is excessive <laughs> eating. You know, like here in America, everywhere commercials on TV, they're giving you big portions and all this. They're just people just going. And he said, and drunkenness. So that's what he meant, eating and drinking. He's not talking about drinking Coca-Cola <laughs> or drinking water. <laughs> He's talking about eating. He's talking about eating and drinking. They were, you know, eating as much as they can, getting drunk and carousing, <laughs> and the cares of this life, the worries of that life. So that day come upon you unaware, where you're not, you know, where people are just they're so caught up on the trouble that's happening. They're getting their eyes fixed off of God or Jesus coming back. Amen. Our deliverance. For as a snare shall it come on all them that dwell <coughs> on the face of the whole earth. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be like a trap to come upon them, upon the whole earth. Mm -hmm. He said, watch ye therefore and pray always that you may be accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass <coughs> and to stand before who? <coughs> the Son of Man. Mm -hmm. Amen. We're, we're mm -hmm. going to close in a minute. So right here, look, he said in Matthews 18, all things are going to happen just like what? The days of Noah. And they're, they're going to be eating, partying, and drinking. You know, they're not, they're, Noah was telling them if we go, it, it says that when we look in the book of Genesis in the days of Noah, it was violence that covered the whole earth. That's what was do going on. Everyone was doing what was right in their own eyes, you know? And he kept building. That's the thing Noah did. By faith, he was building. Amen? He, he, he was called a preacher of righteousness because as he was building, they were watching. I mean, here it is. No one seen rain before. But what, when you talk about what was he preaching, it's going to flood. They didn't even know what a flood was. They never even knew a flood. It never rained at that time. Right. Well, they never seen Jesus come in our generation. I mean, we see the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, but physically seeing Jesus, he came, what, 2,000 years ago, <coughs> but he had said he's coming back again. Amen? Amen. And then where every eye is going to see. Amen? Amen? And so he, he's coming, but as you're telling them, it's like telling the flood's coming. So get, get in safety, get protected, get saved, amen? Mm -hmm. Least you get caught unaware, mm -hmm. amen? Mm -hmm. So it, they didn't believe what was being said and no one was building. The animals had sense enough to come in the ark and stuff, mm -hmm. but I'm saying the only eight were saved. <laughs> but what happened when that day came, the door was shut, mm -hmm. amen? They, and it, well, they had a thing on TV not too long, the other day, about Noah was a play. But it, when you think about it, it wasn't just Noah and them. Mm -hmm. Imagine the daughters who his son married. Mm -hmm. They had parents. Those parents were out there. Mm -hmm. Their cousins <laughs> and all them. Mm -hmm. Siblings and all that. Only eight were saved, but they had the whole cousins and everything that were out there. Family and all that. And the only ones who were in the ark was eight of them mm -hmm. in that time. <laughs> So the thing is, today, <laughs> praise God, we have grace, but praise God, we could be like Rahab, who for, because of her faith, the whole household was saved. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen? It wasn't destroyed. That's what happened. Everyone who stood in her house was saved, whether they believed or not, they were all saved. Amen? Amen. Because she, <laughs> through her faith, the walls of Jericho didn't fall down. Mm -hmm. 
But this time, amen, we have the time to tell people the Lord's coming. He's returning. But God's <laughs> going to come, amen, as a thief to those who aren't aware. Praise God. And so here it says, verse 39, And knew not until the flood came and took them all the way, so shall be the coming of the Son of Man. That's what he's saying. There shall come a time like that. Praise God. I'm going I'm to close it there. But we don't have to be the ones caught off guard because God's, God's <laughs> grace is in these last days. Amen? And I'm telling you, there's going to be a revival that's coming upon the land. It's going to be a flood of the Holy Spirit that's coming. Amen? Before the return of the Lord, where we're going to see many saved. Amen? Many coming to the Lord. Praise God. So it, the thing is, is to encourage people, listen, th there's a time now, because the day's at hand, people can repent and come to the Lord, and God's moving. God's going to fill people with this Holy Spirit, amen? And we're going to see it, and we'll talk about that the next time, amen? How, how, how when the people come to Mount Zion, praise God, there's going to be peace over that whole place. Peace in Mount Zion. We don't need swords, amen? They're going to be taking their swords and making them shovels, amen, where we don't need weapons because on Mount Zion, praise God, there will be peace on that. And that's a spiritual <laughs> peace with God's people, praise God, amen. amen. Father, we just thank you right now for your word. We give you glory, honor, and praise. We thank you for all you're doing, all you have done, Lord. We thank you for every person that's watching right now, Father, in Jesus' mighty name, Lord. And right now, if you don't know the Lord, or you have known the Lord and you want to come back to the Lord, we take this opportunity for you to be able to receive. All you have to do is just go to Him. The Lord's grace is sufficient right now. Hallelujah. The Lord's grace is sufficient. Hallelujah. Right now. And He's saying, come, all that wants to come. Amen. His arms are open. His arms are wide. And He's receiving all that wants to come, upon, come to Him. Praise God. And all you got to do is invite the Lord in your life. And you'll see your life change like never before. So we invite you today. I'll pray with you and I'll pray for you. Amen. And all you have to do is say, Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Forgive me. And cleanse me from all unrighteousness. And we thank you right now, Lord. Because I believe you died for me. And you rose again for me that I can have life and that much eternity. And right now, if you had prayed and just asked the Lord, and you're seeing this now, we just pray for you. Father, I thank you for them who have received in the name of Jesus. I pray you cover them. I bind the hand of the enemy off of them in Jesus' mighty name. And I thank you, Father God, for giving them life and that much more abundantly. Cover them by your blood in the name of Jesus. And we thank you for it in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. And Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for each and every person here. Lord, we rebuke any sickness right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, Father, we rebuke, Father God, in Jesus' spirit of infirmity, we command to go in Jesus' mighty name. And we thank you for your healing right now, Father God, in the name of Jesus. We give you glory, we give you honor, we give you praise right now in the name of Jesus. And we thank you. We thank you for your healing power, Father God, in this place, in Jesus' mighty name. We give you glory, honor, and praise for it, Father God. In Jesus' mighty name, hallelujah. We thank you. We bless you, Lord. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, hallelujah. Amen.